Hola. You are here, finally here. We made it to the registration point of the race. All of a sudden, cyclists everywhere, bikes everywhere, so many bikes. So welcome back to this new video. Second video in the small mini-series leading up to Mike and my efforts to race Badlands Ultra Distance Gravel Race in the south of Spain. Today is the day before the race. We already did a preparation ride in the video that we can link to up here. Uh -huh. Today is registration. We're gonna get a cap with our number. We're gonna get the tracker. Well, we'll give you a final run through of our bikes. Which equipment we're bringing, where we're bringing it, what kind of bags we're using. And then after the adventure, we can tell you if that was the right choice. <laughs> Like signing his life away you and making sure that they call us man when we uh, you, crash. Definitely. <laughs> the bike check we promised. Oh no, first, what's in our starting kit? Handy. Already some Morton stuff. It's Morton. Always, always good for us. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Morton. Some gels, I forgot them. A buff, maybe good for you to sleep. A cap. Cap. 207 for Mikey. Two or six for me. You're going to like this when you're sleeping in the desert with the wind on your face. <laughs> and then I think in my bag is the tracker. So this is how uh, trackers work during a race like this. I believe we're supposed to turn it on tomorrow and then uh, everyone in the world can see where we are. We only have one tracker so we cannot be angry, we cannot fight. It's always difficult even when we do nothing and it's now on the bike. Definitely get some fights but we will see. <laughs> but bike check. Obviously our bikes are similar, they're both Focus Atlas bikes, aluminum bikes, so we can thresh them around. Don't have to be gentle with them. Bulletproof, I think. Yeah. When we see all the comparison here with the other bikes, I think we have one of the widest tires, the sturdiest wheels. I'm a little bit worried that other people are going to be way faster than we are, but hopefully we are not going to get in as much trouble. <laughs> if you saw the other video where we did the, the preparation ride already, yeah. you saw what the surroundings were, air, water, and uh, all the single tracks and all the stuff. If you come there with your 40 millimeter tires yeah. in a very dry sand in the night. Let's hope we made the right choice. It's our first time and this is the most safe choice. True. Let's start talking about what we brought. Yeah. First the things that we both brought. We both have the same tail fin. Well, not the same one. You have a carbon one, I have an alloy one because I wanted to bring my flask at night I can't sleep if I don't have a little sip of bourbon in our tail fins we have food I've got mine stuffed with 24 bags of Morton so eight bags of Morton a day towards the end I'm gonna use more of the caffeine Morton <laughs> I've also got some gels in there and some bars because sometimes I guess I just want to chew on something and I think I should be able to finish the race on this with very little other food our idea is that we don't really stop that much and I think with this amount of Morton I'm gonna be able to do that. Tailfin is absolutely great because it's so stable. Yeah, what more can I say? Oh yeah, I've also got some chargers and those kind of things in the back. Uh, some electronics. Mike, same thing, but he has some clothes in there as well. That's yeah, why there's a little bit more, more space in here. And I need to put some stuff out. If we go fully to the front and we have the racks, we go to the same rack. A line components diamond rack diamond because rack. everyone keeps asking. It's always sold out. It's attached to the to the forks. Got the light on there as well. The dynamo some dynamo light in combination with the dynamo hub. And yeah, that's good for all the power for lights, for headlamp, for uh, GPS. We don't need to charge at restaurants. We don't need yeah. to wait for something. Nights are very long. 11 hours here. It will be very dark because we have a lot of light options. We are the camper van version of the bike. Yeah. We are fully self-supporting, we don't need anything. No. Then in here, we've got a dry bag, both I think the same one, which is stuffed with sleeping bag, a baby bag. Still not sure if we're gonna bring it because it's not gonna rain anyway. I didn't bring a mat, but I did bring a puffer jacket for night or descents when it gets cold. Yeah. We've brought one set of cycling kit. Yeah, and that's why I have one, one short like uh, underwear in it because then it's the only three hours a day that I can put my bib off, Aye. hang it in the tree, get some fresh air in it, and Aye. then the next day put the dirty one back on. I think I'm going uh, Yeah, you always go naked. Naked and sleeping. Naked, naked and sleeping. <laughs> I'm uh, scared, scary for all the, <laughs> the dogs that are going to nibble on your sausage. 
exactly. <laughs> this side will be full of food. It's now the net and uh, some tools that need on the other side. Where's your battery? It's on the other side. Ah, there's one bag with two sides. With two sides, that's why ah. I choose the B, B version of it. Ah. Okay, here I have my tools and, and the loop for the chain. Yeah. Which kind of loop are you using? I go for, the, you don't expect it here, but for the rainy days. Let's wait. People, can you see? The rainy days, because it is so. <laughs> we did two, two times 30 kilometers in the desert, a chain is directly dry. Yeah. It just falls off your chain basically here. And I am going for slick wax. I'm a wax guy. I want my gold chain to look gold. So it's brand new, the chain. I like to coat it in a lot of different coatings of wax. So I think I'm on four coats right now. I'm going to add another one tonight and then I think my chain is pretty much good for probably the first half of the race. And at night I will add some more to it so it can dry out and then the next day I'm good to go again. Uh, another thing that we have different is that I have a frame bag custom made for this bike which is why it exactly fits and it attaches to the bottle holder mounts here. Super sturdy. In this I've got two compartments. One compartment on the left for a two liter water bladder that is right now still in the car, in a cooler, so that tomorrow is going to be nice and cold when we start. And then in the front here, I've got also a power bank to charge my GoPros because I'm going to be filming the whole trip on GoPros. I've got chargers for my phone, for my hammerhead, and then some spare batteries for the headlight. Oh yeah, we didn't bring our helmets. So we can show the headlights, but we've got Phoenix something something headlights, which are supposed to last up to 20 hours on the brightness that we want. Ironite, 400 lumens. 400 lumens, whatever that means. So that would mean that we can run it for an entire night in bike. addition to the front light that we have on the bike. Because especially in climbs and descents, the bike only lights like a little bit in front of you. And then with the headlights, we're gonna be able to see around the corner or those kind of things. Yeah. Again, we're going for safety. Who knows, maybe we don't need it, but probably with the long nights, I think we'll be very happy about it. Every light you have then in the night will it's be good. better. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Normally it's a black bag, but I put reflective tape on it because I hoped that with the crazy hot sun here, it would keep my water a little bit cooler. Who knows if it works? I think it looks cool. And then here I've got a snack pouch, which holds candies. Morton gel, gloves. I think I'm going to be wearing gloves most of the time because I only have really thin old handlebar tape. I always have two layers of it because I'm Double big, tape. The, the big hands, like a normal size for me to. Yeah. Uh, but now I put a classic old handlebar tape on it. Much more damping and much more comfort. Better feeling. You've got aero bars. I had aero bars on mine, but I decided to take them off. Yeah, because I ride like that all the time. And but then you, with the you are so aero that this was on your uh, on your handlebars. Yeah, is that you cannot lay this and put your hands like this. Exactly. So that's I had why, to choose. Yeah. That's why I put the five centimeter spacers between it that I can yeah. hold like this and lay like this. This is not for aerodynamics a little bit, but more for comfort. You sit here for all day almost. Yeah. And it's it, going to be hurting there and there. <laughs> and if you can put your hands here a little bit and uh, relax your shoulders. In a climb or go, uh, go on a straight path, uh, I think that's good. Yeah. Gearing, that's also different. Yeah, yeah on the back it's no different. We both go uh, for the biggest size uh, possible for the, for the derailleur we have. 11.42. And I have in the front 46.30 to buy. That's, that's the standard GRX setup, I think. Yeah, exactly. And I wanted to go one by because I think it's cool. And when something is cool, I need it. And I've gone oval. So I have a 36 tooth chain ring, which on the one side feels like a 34, and then the other feels like a 38. I'm not really all the way convinced about oval yet. I don't mind it, but I just use it now because it's the smallest one I have. For this race, I don't care about being able to pedal when I'm riding over 40 kilometers an hour, but I do care about being able to pedal six kilometers an hour up a 20% gravel climb. We're running the same tires. Panaracer Gravel King SK 50 millimeters tubeless with an insert. Yeah, I think this is the most sturdy tire. The yeah. most durable tire we can find. Yeah, we will see. Once again, this is the first time for us. Exactly. Off the bike, what we're wearing, we cannot talk about that. We can say that we are wearing map clothes. Yeah. 
and that's all we can say. It's the type of kit that you would want to wear when you're riding gravel. But you can say that we go for a light top because of the heat, no dark colors, stuff like that. We go for the grey helmet, because also not the, uh, the black helmet for this weather. The most breathable helmet. Yeah. Um, I think on gravel having bibs with pockets would be really nice. Yeah, but I still go for the, the black ones because otherwise you used always see your sweat already, but in the black <laughs> it will be a little bit more classy. Yeah. Uh, Mike's going classy. Go for Merino wool socks, still fresh I think after a couple of... Uh... Because we're bringing only one pair of socks, one pair of shoes. Obviously we are going for the Grand Tour, which is a shoe with laces, mountain bike shoes, SPD pedals. Can you show the bottom? Because the bottom I think is the best part about this shoe. It's really comfortable to walk on. Yeah, exactly. And I'm always on the stiffest the shoes possible. And I think this part between your, your cleat and your heel where you don't want flex is very stiff yeah. but the front part for walking yeah. is super soft yeah. that's if we walk up the climbs I don't I hope we need to walk but if we need to walk it will be very steep and I have some, some flex in the front for some, for some grip for that yeah even like if we go to the shop or if we have to do some walking like even today we've yeah. been wearing these shoes for most of the day and I haven't really thought about it because they're just so comfortable to wear and you can put all the power down. Mm. We've got a backpack with a water bladder. I'm bringing four and a half liters, Mike's bringing four liters of water. Again, it means that we don't have to stop that much to refuel or refill. In the backpack, we've also got some more tools like the stuff that we need quickly. I've got my dyna plug, got a phone there, we've got earbuds yeah. for when we want to listen to a podcast, all music, you which, don't want which to talk. is probably all the time. <laughs> On a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you to start tomorrow? Mm, I'm more curious about the first, first part. You can calculate how much time it will take a long trip like this, but every kilometer an hour average, it changes the whole, whole, the whole tour. Let's we don't say. know if the average is going to be 8, 10, 12, or 16. 16. It's absolutely no know. idea. Yeah. And that's, uh, you can search for a supermarket, you can search for everything, but if you don't know how late you will arrive there, it's difficult. Yeah. If we start tomorrow and we do the first 100 kilometers and we arrive again in the desert, we will see. Hopefully we can make a lot of kilometers tomorrow. It's a tricky start directly. I think the first 40 kilometers already 1800 meters of elevation. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a big life. It's a crazy start. <laughs> We've seen a lot of really fast people here. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they will all go really fast at the start and then we start easy. Right. Catch up, catch up, catch up. No, but steady. Steady. Yeah. We never stop. That's the plan. If we can ride the average that we hope we can get, the race will take us 72 hours, three days, with two times, three hours ish sleep in the middle, in a ditch. We will see. Right now, we're going to eat some pasta and get a last good night of sleep, hopefully. Yeah. Maybe worry a little bit so then we don't sleep that much. We'll see. We'll see. And then we will see you again in the race video, which we start recording tomorrow. On a scale of one to 10, I'm 10 excited. <laughs> All right. See you in the next you video. See. You will see how it ends up. Ciao. Bye bye.